Welcome back to the Thrive Time Show. Have a business question? Email us today at info at thrivetimeshow.com. And Clay and Dr. Z will answer your business questions live on the air. All right, Thrive Nation, welcome back to the conversation. It is the Thrive Time Show on your radio. We're talking about how to become the elephant in any room. Uh, Specifically, we're talking about the 57 words of wisdom and mindsets you need to become a successful person. Now, I want to make sure that all the listeners know where I came from. My name's Clay Clark. Um, I grew up, you know, in a family where we struggled financially from time to time. Uh, my dad worked hard. Mom worked hard. I remember my dad was 37. I'm 37 now. I remember one time I found out he was delivering pizza to make ends meet. And as a kid, I thought, because all the kids were like, we heard your dad delivers pizza. And they'd make fun of me because of it. And I stuttered all the time, too. So, Steve, people used to make fun of me because my dad delivered pizza. Right. So I used to make up stories. I'd say, no, my dad does not deliver pizza. My dad actually works uh, in a a job for the the government, and it's classified what he does. Yeah, it looks like he's a pizza delivery driver. But, But I mean, seriously, I, I would make these things up because people would make fun of me. Now, as a as a man, my dad, dad died about 15, 16 months ago. He died on 9 5. Uh, he died of uh, ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease. And now, I think that's the most incredible thing you could do to realize that you can't make ends meet and to deliver pizzas. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I mean, to think about that, that you aren't going to go on welfare and you're going to deliver pizzas. Yeah, some people won't. That's why they'll just talk about how they're broke and they don't have a job and they can't. But I mean, that's do a pretty it. cool thing. Yeah. So, Tom Clark, listening to the show, Dad, I appreciate you delivering pizzas i mean that that mean now i would say perspective hindsight is if someone said to me today does your dad deliver pizzas to make ends meet i'd say you are freaking right my dad does and he deals with the humiliation he puts the little dominoes thing up on his car he drives around and he does it with a smile because he gives a crap about his kids and he's yeah. not a slacker and he's not the kind of guy who's going to take government handouts he's going to work his butt off to provide for his family because my dad gives a crap. Now, are you on government assistance? Are you refusing to get a job? You, my friend, have a problem. My dad doesn't have a problem. Do you think Aubrey's like, kids are like, hey, is your dad a DJ? And he's like, no, 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 no. He's a business coach. I think a lot of of people, I think it's a deal of like, you know, you, as a kid— you know, lie. I mean, kids are so mean to each other. And so as a kid, you might you might realize right now, this is something big. You might be 37 right now, and you might be still struggling, Steve, with something that you dealt with when you were 12. Like you might seriously, yeah. an event happened to you when you're like 10, mm-hmm. and now you're 40, and you're still dealing with it. Yeah. It's weird. I mean, so again, I, I put the psychology today uh, uh, link to the article so you guys can read it. It's called The Power of Positive Self-Talk. So you can see clinical psychologists that are breaking down the science of it, the medical research of it. You can see it. But I'm just telling you this. Move number 15. If you want to become the elephant in any room, the most successful person in any room, it's not so much about making others believe in you as it is making your subconscious a believer. So Vince Lombardi, the football coach, kind of the a big player, deal. The executive in the NFL National Football League. He's best known for being the head coach of the Green Bay Packers during the 1960s, where he led the team to three straight and five total NFL championships in seven years. All right. In addition to winning the first two Super Bowls at the conclusion of the 1966 and 1967 season, basically he was the man. He says, winners never quit and quitters never win. Now, Steve, Ooh, snap. this is where I, I want to turn the mic to you and let you pontificate. Now, for those of you who don't know Steve Currington, if you're thinking about buying a house, the mortgage rates are only going up. So I would encourage you to go to stevecurrington.com today, stevecurrington.com today, or Google search Tulsa Mortgages, and you can find them. And you can just get pre-qualified for a loan before the mortgage rates go up. They are going to go up a lot because Trump, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump, is making sure that inflation doesn't go crazy. So he's going to be raising the rates over time. And if you want to buy a house and you're like, I'm not really sure of the political ramifications, nor do I care. I just want to buy a house before the rates go up. 
go to stevecurrington.com and get pre-qualified today. But Steve, what's the most number of loans that you've closed in a month? Just to give the, the listeners a, a little perspective, the most, because I know a lot of mortgage professionals that I am friends with, I have met, who are happy to close one or two a month. Because you get a pretty decent commission when you close a loan. And a lot of, a lot of people I know, if they close two loans a month, I mean, that's like $6,000 a month. They're excited. Yeah. How many loans do you guys close as a company like in, a, in, in, you know, the, in the winter month, last month? How many yeah. loans did you guys close? Yeah, I think we, we added up that we did, se- what did I say, 71 unit or 71 units of loans which is more like 35 times more than the typical standalone mortgage broker guy so yeah. again it's a lot so steve for somebody out there who's struggling to embrace this idea but mm-hmm. it's not about making others believe in you as much as it is you believing in you yeah talk to them encourage yeah. this person well, you know, you talk about the self-talk and about, I always tell people, you have to protect your mind. You have to protect what gets in. And that's exactly why I'm very, very focused on what my schedule is and who I give my time to. And in the book that you just wrote, The Art of Getting Things Done, that you- Have oh, you started reading of, the book yet? Yeah. So the number two thing that is in there says, learn to say no to more stuff. You've got to figure out how to say no. And so I would just tell you that- if you're trying to protect your mind and you're trying to be that person who um, believes, has your subconscious believing, you have to protect what comes into your head because that's what happens. This is also, Clay, the reason why I know both of us, we don't watch the news. Right. This is the reason why um, I had a guy that, really nice guy that has a super pack. He started wanting to meet with me and I, he was a nice guy. And actually, the reason I met with this guy is because he was cold calling voters. And I was like, you're a stud, I'll meet with you. But what I told him is like, I don't really get involved in politics because it's negative. It's and negative. I don't, I don't have time to like deal with that. I, I, wa- I want to ask you this. You are very guarded about how you guard your mind and uh-huh. who you're around. But I want to ask you this because this is a question that I think a lot of people have. What do you, probably putting yourself out there a little bit, what is the self-doubt that you've, you've, you've ever struggled with or have you ever struggled with that? Well, yeah, d- definitely. You know, I shared on a previous segment about, you know, getting fired from my debt collector job, you know. Um, and then getting in the mortgage business. Well, it wasn't that long ago, you know, December, December of 15 that I got fired from a job where I was running a three state division for a mortgage company. I had, you know, 12 or 13 people working for me in Tulsa and I managed about 40 people and I made really good money and I got fired 12 days before Christmas. So the self doubt I have is, is everyone against me? Can I trust anyone? Because I literally like had a coup in my office where everybody was smiling in my face on Friday, like, hey, everything's great. And then the big boss flies in on Saturday and fires me. So, I mean, I think everybody deals with that, but you have to find the things that you can put into your mind. So I listen to a lot of books. Um, I Do you like the, the – so far, I mean, I know it's a kind of a heavy-handed question, but have you – as you're reading The Art of Getting Things Done, is it, are you getting some ideas? Yeah, you know – what I like about that book is it's just very specific and it's it's not like a you know some people just ramble on and on and on and on and on about a subject about whatever needs to happen but you've got practical stuff in there and even like checklists that you can fill out. And so there's a lot of books about time management and 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 all that stuff and there's actually a really good book I've listened to several times called Getting Things Done. I mean that's the book. It's I've got it on Audible. But but yeah, it's just very direct and very to the point. And if you even if you were to grab that book and just flip through what the chapters are and what the 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 items that are in there, you could hit three of them and be happy. If you want to get that book, go to Amazon.com today and search for The Art of Getting Things Done by Clay Clark. Stay tuned. We're talking about how to become a source of wisdom. Do you need help growing your business? Take the challenge. The Thrive Time Business Coach Program will beat any marketing firm's prices by 50%. Schedule your free consultation today at thrivetimeshow.com. Need a marketing firm? Our Business Coach Program offers better and faster results for half the cost of any other marketing firm. Learn more at thrivetimeshow.com. Thrive Nation, welcome back to the conversation. It is the Thrive Time Show on your radio. Anybody listening today from Guam, hello. One of the craziest things was at our most recent uh, conference. Right. I like to have a little fun with folks, and I'm like, hey, how many folks do we have here who are not from Tulsa? And, of course, the majority of hands are up there. I mean, you've got people from 
Florida, people from California, New York, New York. You've got a lot. And, and the thing about this, this is a biblical concept. Uh, Steve, have you ever heard about the prophet can't be from his own town? I was thinking town? this, and the this. I was just thinking that when you were saying that, because when Doctor Green, who was the dean of the school of business at ORU and my pastor of Bixby Community Church, uh, was a re- he was my business coach for a long time, and I used great to, guy, I great used guy. Never always, heard a bad thing about yeah, the guy. Great guy. Used to always say that about him because Doctor Green would do these training that like at uh, Cedar Ridge Country Club, and you know anywhere from twelve to forty people would show up, and I'm just thinking, and he's like, you know, I've I've traveled all over the country and all over the world. And, and I you'll speak, speak with like 500 people. Oh, yeah, or 10,000. You know, right. he's been on the stage and people are just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. But in Tulsa, you know, he's like, oh, Dr. Green, he's he just lives over there. He's he's just. Now, Luke. That's four, just Mary's son. <laughs> Luke 424 reads, truly, I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his own town. This is from the Bible. The Bibliotheque. Is that what the Bible. Called? Or is that 424 the states, truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. No, 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 no great teacher. So yeah. this is where I want to I want to give this to you. I want to give you the final move we're going to cover today. Or in the coming days, we're going to be teaching you the 57 super moves that you can use to become a source of wisdom, to become the elephant in any room. That was my prayer for years, is I want to become a source of wisdom and not just the guy who is like a Beverly Hillbilly who made a ton of money as a disc jockey. I would like to say yeah. that uh, that actually has happened now. You have become a source of wisdom to a lot of people, including me. And I think I know a few things. You know, I, I mean, I, I had some business coaching, and it's one of the things I appreciate about being a Thrive client, being your friend, is I think you feel like Dr. Z is a great source of wisdom. And you get a lot from him, but there's a lot of people that get a lot of wisdom from you. Dr. Z, I appreciate you saying that. Um, a Dr. Z, um, to me, and I'll try to keep it together here, but he is like, when you are when you have a dad, a, a father in your life, and your biological dad, when your dad passes away, my dad died of ALS. When my dad died, there is no way I could ever say to somebody, hey, is it possible, like, is it? It, would it be okay if you could be my dad? Because you can't ask that. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, you can't, like, what does that even mean? I mean, to care about me in my time of need, to check in on me, to be a dad? Yeah. And he's not perfect. I mean, he was perfect. He called me and said, hey, son, do you, can I fill that gap for you? That was like... Like that was that was uh, it was one of those things where I almost when my dad I remember my dad left me a voicemail before he died and I kept it so that I can hear it and I listen to it in the mornings a lot and like my dad before he died the coolest thing my dad did is he actually secretly hired one of my videographers without me knowing mm-hmm. and he recorded for me telling me what's going to happen. Yeah. And what and he's like, this is what's going to happen, and this is what I wanted you to know. And it's I've watched it probably a hundred times, like yeah. it's crazy. I watch it all the time, and um, it's it's a thing where like th- that the the power of that the the mentorship you get from a source of wisdom is incredible. And I know there's somebody listening to this show, and every time we do a show, I mean, we teach shows on how to optimize websites and how to do sales, and I really don't do every show for everybody. I do every show for one person. Yeah. And if that one person, if it helps you, then it's worth the show. So there's, you know, more people that listen. We have more people listening to our show than who go to a Chicago Cubs game on average. But at the end of the day, it's not for everybody. It's for you. So here's the message for you. This is the final mindset we're going to cover today. Mindset number 16. Yep. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Which is exactly why I try to spend time with Clay and with other people that are successful, that can bring me up, which is exactly why. Now, Tim Ferriss, the best-selling author of The 4-Hour Workweek, one of the early stage investors of of a company called Facebook, of a company called Uber, he says, you are the a- he says you are the average of the five people you associate with. Sounds kind of familiar. So let me make sure you get this idea. Steve, th- see, this is what's crazy about Tim Ferriss. I don't think people realize this. Tim Ferriss attended college like so many people, and he thought, you know what I'm going to do? 
I want to have like a really awesome life. And so he actually took this idea to the extreme. Are you familiar with the Mike Maple story of Tim Ferriss? Mm-mm. You'd like this. And I, I, I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the uh, Mike, uh, it's, if, you, if you Google search Mike, Mables, uh, Mike Maples Jr. and then Tim Ferriss interview, you can find it. And I'll put it on the show notes. If you go to thrivetimeshow.com, you can find it there. And I'm going to put a link to the YouTube uh, video so you can find it there because it's pretty incredible, uh, the interview. But long story short, he says to Mike Maples Jr. Now, Mike Maples Jr., just so you guys get this, was one of the early stage investors in Twitter. He's one of the leading venture capitalists of our time. He's uh, the guru. He's not Warren Buffett, but he's close. Yeah. Mike Maples Jr. Uh, someone says, well, Mike Maples Jr., I think he's a bunch of crap. I mean, that, I don't even never <laughs> heard the name. I don't even know what. I mean, who is Mike Maples he's Jr.? He's like an M&M, Mike he, Maples. Yeah, I mean, okay, he's listed right now on Forbes. Uh, and Forbes magazine will list the net worth of people. They believe right now that his uh, group is particular. Again, this is just stuff at Forbes report, so I don't know how active, how, a- how accurate it is. But they're saying that Mike Maples is sort of one of the people you want to watch because his fund is worth billions of dollars. Billions with a B. Yeah. So like hundreds Mike- or billions? Billions. Billions. So with a B. So Michael, Michael Maples Jr., he says this. He says, Tim, I'm going to buy these stocks. And Tim says, if it's cool, I'd like to buy the same stocks that you buy. You know, so if you're going to buy, if your company, if your fund is going to do like a $1 million investment in Twitter, I could do like $1,000. Is that cool? If I just follow you, but proportionately, I'll invest dollar for dollar proportionately. You know, I mean, I don't have billions to invest right. or millions but if you invest a million i'll invest like a thousand if you invest two million i'll invest two thousand and i'm just going to invest in exactly what you invest in yeah every stock is that cool and mike maples jr says yeah that's cool because no one's ever asked me that question before so you're just wanting to copy exactly what i do he says yeah and he yeah. says okay cool so the way it'll work is whenever i invest in something i'll just kind of cc you on the email like i just bought you know two million dollars of this of this stock and you can just do like 2000 or whatever. Yeah. He says, okay, Tim Ferriss, during this this was wide-ranging interview, you can hear, I put the link on the show notes. Um, again, this is Tim Ferriss, the author of The 4-Hour Workweek. It's, Tim, it's Tim Ferriss with Mike Maples Jr. If you haven't, if you haven't inter- if listened to this, it's, it's, it's incredible. But, I mean, Steve, you would love this here. But it's like a, it's, a, it's an incredible interview. But he copies exactly what he does. Right, yeah. And do you know what happens, Steve? He makes a lot of money. He makes exactly the same return that Mike Maples Jr. does. <laughs> yeah. So here's yeah. a college student who wrote one best-selling book who just follows his mentor with investments, and he makes the same return. Right. He asks Mike Maples, Mike Ma- Ma- Maples Jr., he says, Mike Maples, how would you uh, market a book? And he says, oh, well, what you'll want to do is you'll want to run ads on Google AdWords, and you'll want to test to see which title gets the most clicks. In which everyone gets the most clicks, that's the book title. Yeah. And he's going, what? He's like, yeah, you want to test it. A, B, test it. And so he actually does it. And some people are like, no, I want my book to be called. So I'm just telling you, (laughs) if you are around really successful people, by osmosis, you will become more successful. And some people say, well, what's the word osmosis mean? It's basically where you unconsciously subconsciously you start to gradually assimilate the ideas and the knowledge of other people just by being around them so if you're around really really bad people over time you'll start to talk like them if you move to minnesota long enough you'll start to talk like you're from minnesota i was from minnesota over time you're i grew up in i was born in oklahoma moved to minnesota and uh, this is what happens is over time you start to say, oh, don't you know? Oh, don't you know? And people know. say, what did you just say? And you're going, no, I said, don't oh, you don't you know. know? Or you'll say, oh, you know, we're going up north. And people in Oklahoma who knew you back in the day, did you just say you're going up north? Oh, yeah. My my friend Leaf and I and Bjorn, we're going up north. And all of a sudden you realize I become a Minnesotan. And yeah. you become the average of the people that you're around. So 
The idea is think about the people that you're surrounding yourself with and be intentional about it. My name is Clay Clark. You've been listening to the Thrive Time Show. On tomorrow's show, more about becoming a source of wisdom. And now without any further ado, we'd like to end with a boom. Three, two, one, boom. boom.